Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. We have a very, very, very special uh, guest lineup today. Uh, We're celebrating the Frameline Film Festival in San Francisco, and we're speaking with uh, two of the directors from the film Keep the Cameras Rolling, the Pedro Zamora Way, and also two of the featured, I would say, storytellers, uh, Judd Winnick and Pam Ling. And um, we're so honored to have you here on Bitch Talk. And I think I'll start with Bill. Uh, Can you tell us what Keep the Cameras Rolling is about? Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, it's about uh, it's it's about Pedro Zamora, right? Uh, who was the um, sort of um, a, a key player, although not the only key player in the uh, third season of the Real World. Uh, but we were really interested in the um, uh, sort of profound impact that Pedro had on opinion about a lot of things. And so it's it's about Pedro and 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 his message. Yeah, we at we at Bitch Talk are huge, huge, uh, specifically real world San Francisco fans, um, old school. You know, we started watching right when it came out. Um, so this this was a no brainer for us to cover. And we were so excited to talk about it. Um, but but I'd love to just start off by the timing of the release of this film. You know, here we are almost 30 years later, still fighting for gay rights, specifically trans rights. Um, so can maybe our filmmakers talk about uh, was was this intentional? Yeah, yes, it really was. We uh, we started the film with hopes maybe to get it out in time for the 25th anniversary of the of the show and the pandemic and a few other things. You know, every documentary takes longer than you think. But one of our goals, this was the work we're, we're both professors at the University of Missouri. And uh, the, a lot of the people, if you watch the film, you'll see the credits, the producers and writers and so on were students and Judd and Pam met the students, they did the interviews with them. And so we wanted the film to introduce this this generation, Gen Z, maybe, maybe some younger millennials to Pedro and to let them ponder a little bit what's changed since 1994 and, and frankly, what hasn't changed since 1994. I wanted to ask um, Pat, Pam and Judd, you know, it's been now 28 years um, since the yes. San Francisco which is yes. scary. Um, <laughs> but were you, were you two approached um, in the last 28 years about maybe making a documentary about Pedro? And if so, um, how come Stacy and Bill were the ones to say yes to? Oh, um, well, I, we're incredibly um, charming. <laughs> <laughs> that was a given. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was, that was true. I mean, doing a little backpedaling. So, um, uh, Stacy and Bill, you can remind me. Uh, so John Murray, the producer of the real world, um, he actually has, what is the official title of the school at, uh, the, is it the school of media and journalism? It, documentary it's, the, it's the school, Missouri school of journalism. And our program that I run is called the Jonathan B. Murray center for documentary journalism. So there's a connection to the show through our, uh, benefactor. Yeah. So John, who we've been, you know, we've been close to for the last 28 years, a producer of the show, uh, Bill and Stacey had reached out to him about doing this. John reached out to us, like, yeah, they're doing a documentary about Pedro. So for us, it was like, okay. <laughs> so absolutely. Um, and for 28 years, well, we've, we've always been talking about Pedro. Uh, it's the, Pam, when did, we, when did we stop doing real world interviews? It was uh, <laughs> after the E True Hollywood story, I think, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it was like, oh gosh. So like we're like six years, seven years out from doing the show. And Pam and I are coming back from doing an interview for the E True Hollywood story behind the scenes of the real world. And we're both looking at each other and saying, <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Every year there's a new real world, and every year some jokers are coming to talk to us about. So what do you think about this season? Mm-hmm. And uh, we just we stopped. Um, but, um, but made a rule that, yeah, it wasn't even a rule like, but you know what, we won't talk about the show, but if anyone wants to talk about Pedro, 
Mm-hmm. We'll talk about Pedro. So we've been doing interviews and discussions about it, but this is clearly uh, the first formal outing that is uh, that we've had since uh, since the show. The timing of it was was remarkable in a lot of ways because time has gone by. The fact that the show is now available on Paramount Plus. Uh, that's not a plug. I'm just saying what it is. It's weird timing. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a lot of young people. But Pam can attest to this because she sees more human beings than I do. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, uh, I work at home. It was definitely because of connection with John Murray. But also, I mean, I love that this is a student project. Right? I'm yeah. a professor at University of California, San Francisco. And the fact that students did the interviews and wrote the music and uh, really contributed to the project, I think is really in line with um, you know, Pedro and what he would have loved about it too, um, really having young people involved in the fabric. Yeah, if you, if you think about it, the, the bulk of the people who worked on this show are the same age that Pedro was when he was on the show. Yeah, that's exactly what we were thinking when we were doing it. You know, when we were doing the interviews, like, it's like, well, you know, we're old now. So it's like, oh, look at all these kids. <laughs> it's great. They're so good at this. It's awesome. It's great. I'm so glad you're bringing that up because I was going to ask you, Pam and Judd, the differences, because here, when you shot The Real World in 94 with this huge production, nothing like it was being shot. It was a huge ordeal, but you were young and you didn't really know what you were getting yourselves into versus this production that's shot by students. And now you've had 28 years to reflect on your life and the impact that it's had. Can you talk about some of the differences and maybe some things you learned about yourself within the filming of this project? Oh, well, uh, uh Pam and I have master's degree in, in talking on camera now. Uh, you know, <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we, we joke about it, but, you know, we can talk in sound bites. We can, you know, we learned, <laughs> we had a crash course uh, for like six months, uh, you know, two and a half hours a week of like, so, like, so what happened this week? And we're going to go through it like therapy without the help, um, <laughs> discussing everything that happened to you this week. Uh, so, um, Giving interviews and talking on camera is something that we've, you know, got abundantly comfortable with over the last 20 some odd years. Um, but in particular, I think we're, we're most, I think, comfortable and happy to be talking about Pedro um, and telling his story. I mean, that's, I think, the, the really beautiful thing about this documentary is that now we have this long view opposed to when we were living through it, we were... I mean, literally living through it and talking about it in real time. And then uh, and then just briefly after we lost him, talking about it again. So here we are as as adults, um, you know, in my case, like the same age as my parents were when they sent me off to do the show um, <laughs> and looking back and be able to have that perspective. And it's um, it's different. We have, you know, we have a grown-up's perspective looking back on it. Well, and your guys are right, right? Like when we filmed The Real World, nobody knew what we were doing. It, uh, we did not really have an awareness of how many people would see the show or what kind of impact. We had a little bit of an inkling that it would be important, but, you know, the reality of really you know, what it's like to not be able to go to a shopping mall without being mobbed or (laughs) Pedro and Sean went a roller skating after the show was on TV and like basically couldn't even get around the rink one time because there were um, so many people coming up to talk to them. Um, That is something you can think about in theory, uh, but the reality of it really wasn't in our minds when we were filming. Um, Nowadays, right, everyone has can put themselves on TikTok or on the internet and has direct access to putting their story out there. Uh, and of course, now people know abundantly what reality TV is and, and that process. So the context is really different. Um, but what I really value about this film that makes it different, I think, is that you know people can put their story, like what I ate for breakfast today, uh, on TikTok right now. But uh, I think the attention to context and making you know, the time and the interviews they had with, you know, everyone from the historians to, you know, to Bill Clinton and Dr. Fauci to uh, put (laughs) in context, really what was happening at the time and making that seem relevant and real to people today who didn't live through it is something you don't normally see. Yeah, I was going to say, I was surprised to see Bill Clinton in the doc. Was he an easy get? (laughs) No, not at all. (laughs) Uh, 
No, that was that was a lot. That took a long time. But, uh, uh, you know, once we were in the room with him, he was really great and really, really wanted to talk about Pedro. You know, we were told we would have about 15 minutes with him and we were with him for um, a couple of hours altogether. And uh, so um, he, he remembers Pedro well and uh, understands Pedro's importance really well. And uh, so uh, but the initial uh, setting it up was a lot of work. <laughs> it took a long time. No, I think that was an important part of the film. It was refreshing because it's now we're so jaded and it's like oh, people are just doing things for show. They don't really care. So I think it was nice to remember that some good things happened in our past at some point. So anyway, <laughs> moving on, <laughs> moving on. Um, so Pedro was such a public figure. Uh, he lived his life just out in the open. And I'm curious to know if there was anything that came up during the, the course of this film that was a surprise to any of you. Maybe we can start with the filmmakers. Um, anything you heard, any stories you didn't know um, that, that came out? I don't know if it was a surprise, but uh, Millie Zamora, Pedro's sister, is uh, featured in the film. And she opened her home to us in Miami and was so uh, ready to talk about Pedro, you know, and there's some tears through that interview and you'll see that there, but Pedro had a scrapbook that's, you know, featured in the, in the show and uh, Millie keeps that scrapbook still. She's added to it and, you know, she opened that up for us. And so it was a chance to, I think we felt like we had a chance to see a lot more about Pedro than, than anybody had seen before that didn't know him. Yeah, I mean, I would say that I, I had a I had a particular view of Pedro, which was from watching the real world, right? And and uh, and a long time ago, <laughs> I, you know, I was I was I think I I think I took cut a couple of years off my uh, off my age the last time I talked about this at a screening, uh, but I guess I was like twenty four or maybe even twenty five when it aired, and so because uh, I'm fifty three now, so whatever that math works out to, um, but I was in graduate school and I watched it. Um, in part as something, you know, as as relief from studying and also in part because it was an area that I was interested in. I was looking at uh, the impact of uh, World AIDS Day on public opinion. And uh, so so I, I watched it with sort of a scholarly eye, but still, you know, I didn't know Pedro at all. And so everything I learned about Pedro in working on this was new to me. And uh, but at the same time, um, he was as great a guy as I thought he was. Right. So, you know, how he appeared on TV is how he was in real life and in, in terms of the impact and, and at least what I've learned about him. So he's a remarkable guy. Yeah, I loved that you guys got um, the family uh, and then we got yeah. to hear a lot from Millie these days uh, and Peter's father. Um, you know, they uh, I think, of course, they were not on the real world, so they didn't sign up for reality TV, mm -hmm. but their, no. you know, their stories and their voices were. Um, really an amazing part of the documentary. Pedro's father, Hector, uh, is not in very good health now. And so we interviewed yeah. him in 2019, I believe it was. And we, and he was having good days and bad days then. And we got him on a good day and we're able to talk to him. And we saw him again when we were in Miami for the film uh, playing there. Uh, and uh, he's again not doing very well. We couldn't do the interview with him now, for instance, if we had to. So I think we caught caught the family at a great time yeah Hector's Hector's in his 80s and um he's a remarkable man <laughs> he is a remarkable man and uh, has has lived a very very hard life I mean he fought in the Cuban revolution mm -hmm. and uh then pushed back on Castro when uh Castro decided to become a dictator rather than open it up to free elections uh so the family was punished for that and they they had nothing and then came here to the States and had to leave his older children behind. Um, his wife died uh, uh, when they got here. Then his youngest uh, came out in a time where people were not coming out and they test I mean, you know, Pedro contracted HIV and then Pedro became one of the most famous people in America. And it was just, it's, uh, you know, imagine being a dad going through all of that. Um, he's a remarkable man. The whole family actually, it's funny when uh, when Pam and I were were with Pedro when he was when he was sick in, in Florida and we got to just basically like live with the family. Uh, they are a fairly remarkable bunch who all are incredibly eloquent. Um, I remember when uh, Pam, you remember when Jesus got up just without any notes and like gave a speech about Pedro? Um, and it was just like he wasn't gonna talk and he stepped up and talked and we're and the entire 
like crowd was like, holy shit. It was just, it was, it was absolutely remarkable, heartfelt. And um, it was interesting seeing like, oh, so this is where Pedro got this. These were, these were folks who were like a deeply thoughtful, present giant family um, who loved him deeply. So we were so thrilled to see that in the documentary. It was, it's, 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 you know, you can't actually tell Pedro's story without having them part of it. So it was great. And it, it sounds like the family got to see the doc. What's their feedback on it? Uh, we got to meet 140 uh, members of their friends and family group <laughs> at a screening in Miami. Uh, and that was a little nerve wracking, although we knew Millie liked it. So we were hopeful that since Millie thought, you know, um, and uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. That's probably the single most amazing experience that I've had. It's probably, um, it's not probably, it's definitely the best screening we've had. It was in Little yeah. Havana. It, uh, again, th theater completely filled with mostly family friends and, and just fans of Pedro <laughs> and just a great audience to have see the film. Well, we're going to wrap, but um, we're really excited for this film to be seen by so many more the film is Keep the Cameras Rolling, The Pedro Zamora Way. Uh, we're talking with co-directors Bill Horner and Stacey Wolfel and uh, storytellers Judd Winnick and Pam Ling. Thank you so much for being on Bitch Talk. Um, we love this film so much. Thank you very much. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. 